I am so thrilled to be able to bring to you two fabulous comedians, actresses, and OGs in Hollywood. Yeah. They've been around a long time, and they have broken a lot of ground, and I am just honored to call them my comedy sisters. So without further ado, I will introduce you first to the fabulous baby, the, the talented, the amazing, hot and spicy, Ludovica. That's me, baby. Ludo started out as a dancer and then got into comedy and has been headlining for many, many years, along with her husband, Dave Conrad. They have, they have a show called I Love Ludo, and Ludo also has a one-woman show. Um, that we'll talk about, but um, she is super fabulous, and she was one of the hot and spicy mamitas. And next to her is the award-winning, <laughs> yes, woo, 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 woo. amazing <laughs> actress, comedian. She not only was part of Hot and Spicy Mamitas, but she was part of the first group that I put together with Chacha Sandoval called Funny Ladies of Color. Yeah. So... Wow. Please help me welcome these amazing women to come and says mommy. Yay! We applaud ourselves. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Thank you for having us. Thank, yes. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. And so, congratulations, baby, Thank for you. doing this. Thank, Thank you. you. Six yeah, season, baby. Six season, yes. baby. Fabulous. Yes. Yes. Thank That's you. Pretty fabulous. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. So. Um, first, I want to talk about you girls, and then we'll talk about the mamitas. But oh, yeah. I want to talk about how you started in the business. Uh, the business of comedy or the business of well, business? In the beginning, you started as a dancer. Yes, I was a dancer. I was a dancer. I was a dancer because from the moment I can walk, I can tell that that's what I was going to be. <laughs> I was going to be a dancer. And my father was like, oh, no, no, no dancers in this house. You need to be a doctor, you know. And, uh, of course, my mom was afraid of law, so she wanted me to be a lawyer. So my father, doctor, lawyer, doctor, lawyer, doctor. So I became a showgirl. <laughs> <laughs> so I was dancing forever. I um, I traveled half of the world dancing with big stars also, a lot of TV shows um, with big stars. And then I ended up in Las Vegas as a star of the shows in Las Vegas and all the shows I used to do. They used to do shows around me uh, because I had a specialty act, what is called a specialty act, which was adagio and acrobatics and stuff like that. Wow. Because now when I do comedy and I go, I was a dancer, people think I'm talking about a stripper. <laughs> Why I'm would like, I think that? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I mean you would think they would look in here and go, she had nothing to do with it. Okay, so, yeah. But uh, yeah, no. And then um, something happened in my life when I was on the top of my career as a dancer. Um, my little sister uh, contracted uh, HIV. She became mm. HIV and her son. And uh, I just uh, wanted to talk on stage and tell people that they needed to protect themselves so that was the the the, the force that drove me to comedy uh, I saw so many hundreds of people uh, every night they I wanted to let those people know about it so I came to LA and uh, I took this comedy class with Judy Carter and uh, she uh, first time I stand on stage she goes oh my god you're so exotic you don't have to say anything just stand there <laughs> So that's what I used to do to open and, in my and show. For those of a, for those of you who don't know, Judy Carter was the comedy teacher yes. in LA at that time. She she was a comic, and then she wrote a book called Stand Up Comedy, uh, which is huge in the the stand up world. And she taught classes as well as privates. Yes, and uh, I just you know I uh, graduated from her class, and then I was completely hooked, and I started doing um, my shows, my comedy shows, and I used to give condoms in the end of the show to tell people. To yes, have safe sex. To have safe sex. And I used to sing this song, like, I got condoms <laughs> for you to take home. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was like, ding, 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 whatever. You know? I mean, it was so, you know, Mitzi was like, uh, take the condom thing out of your act because you're going to be the next Rosanne bar. <laughs> She, you know, I was like the last girl that she discovered, actually. She gave me my own show in the main room, so I was like, okay, well, I got to do what she said, you know, because, you know, she's directing me, you know. My husband took me to the comedy store because he was the regular there, 
And as soon as she met me, she's like, okay, this is it. You are, you are it. You, you know, are perfect. You, for, exactly. Yes. And, um, well, you know, I was our time. At that time, I was like Latino time, which is, what, 20 years later? And I'm still waiting for the Latino <laughs> time. So The decade of the Latinos. Yeah. You know. <laughs> but I have done very well. I have you know, work with the greatest, Paul Rodriguez, George Lopez, Sam Kinison, you know, uh, George Burns. I mean, you know, I have worked with a lot of, you know, Sammy Davis Jr., uh, Steve Harvey, you know, I have worked with, you know, besides us, the Mamitas. Yes. Which we were the stars <laughs> of my life. Uh, you know, so to me, I, I can't complain. I have been very uh, blessed. It has not been no. easy. But it has been a blessing. Sometimes blessings aren't easy. That's mm -hmm. why they're blessings. Exactly. So, you know, and now here I am. I am a headliner. Um, I have done my one woman show, which it was incredible. HBO wanted to do a scripted series about it, you know. And it's called? Uh, Elvis Under the Mango Tree. The Elvis is the abbreviation for Ludovica. Oh. Yes. So Elvis Under the Mango Tree. And um, it was a biographical story um, of me being a dancer and turning into a comedian, you know. And it was wonderful. And I'm still, I'm still plugging away. The goal uh, for this year is to get my uh, half-hour comedy special. Excellent. Um, it is. Time. I wanted to have a film already for this year, but still, I'm working, you know, because I'm a perfectionist, which is not that good all the time. <laughs> but you know, hey. That's excellent. Yeah. Good so. timing for And that. Deanna, um, I want to start with you. you. You're from Laredo, Texas. What brought you to Los Angeles? Well, fortune and fame, of course, what brings everybody <laughs> to Los Angeles. <laughs> I was born in Nuevo Laredo, Tamaulipas, but I was raised in Laredo, Texas, which is right on the border. But yeah, I mean, of course, I came to L.A. I had a couple of friends out here, and we all wanted to pursue acting. And... Um, I actually was extremely fortunate because I started, you know, doing temp jobs and blah, blah, blah. And just a few months after I was here, they were casting Zoot Suit, the play. Wow. And I actually had some dance experience. I took dancing and they needed dancers and they wanted Latinos, Mexicanos, Chicanos, preferably. And, um, oh my God, I don't even remember what year that was. <laughs> yeah. I, I think it was 78 because yeah. that's when I came. That was the first and play I saw in Los Angeles. Oh my Oh my God, it was so really? amazing. Oh. But I was in the second, yeah. the, the second cast. Okay. Because the first cast went to New York. Yes. So when I got here, they were casting the second cast. Amazing experience at the Aquarius, you know, Evelina Fernandez, Sal Lopez. We were all still good friends. Chris Franco, great wow. experience. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing yeah. people. And so you, so you got Zoot Suit and then... And then, well, you know, I just started pursuing acting. I, I got an agent, and then I started auditioning for hookers and maids <laughs> and drug dealers. And I actually had my first agent. Um, I, I, I think I had red perm hair at the time. And my first agent said to me, you know, Deanna, if you want to play those Hispanic roles, mm -hmm. you have to wear your hair black, straight, and parted in the middle. <laughs> parted in the middle, even. So I go, oh, and I guess I need to bring my rebozo and guaraches <laughs> as well. <laughs> so uh, I was a little confused because I thought I was going to be the next Audrey Hepburn. <laughs> What, what did they tell Audrey? <laughs> oh, yeah. what, what instructions did you follow? I know. Oh, yeah. But um, yeah, sure enough. So did know. you change your name after she had that conversation with you? Yes, I, d yes, I did change my name. Actually, I changed my name since um, right when I was about to do Zoot Suit because I was experiencing, of course, in the States. Elizondo, which is my family name, was always butchered. El Sandro, El Sando, El S and, and I just got sick of it. And my married name, I was actually married once, was Ortiz and Elizondo, so I took Ort Eli, and that was it. That's you know, how you did it. That's I how I did it. it. <laughs> and it stuck, you know, and then, uh, you know, and I also got And there's a, only one. And, and there is only one, yeah. Actually, it's a, it's a real um, last name in Italy, though. I didn't know that. I thought I was making it up. Yeah. I mean, I did make it up. But yes, you what did. It, but um, no, I really came to pursue acting. And if you remember at the time when, well, 
Lydia almost almost literally pushed me out on the stage for funny <laughs> ladies of color. I did. You did. I did. I said, do it. Yeah, she do called it. me and she goes, you can do it. You're funny. And 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 you broke me in easily because first I emceed. I, right. I, I, I right. Hosted, you, you hosted the evening the and brought mm -hmm. everybody on stage. And then I observed. I listened. I saw you. But you were ready. I mean, it wasn't really, uh, you know, I don't think I've ever done that to anybody else. <laughs> but no, but you were you were ready it was just needing a space it was that that was it, it because was. you you I had needed already that push. yeah you I needed you, that push. you were ready you you yeah. were first of all um back then you you still are but back then you were like this firecracker you were like you were buzzing everywhere and doing everything and you were like I'm here and I will not be denied and so it just seemed to me like comedy was get on that stage and do it, it. Do yeah. it baby. yeah because you were too big at that time they weren't giving us the opportunities right of of letting our personalities be oh, wait right a minute. at that time well, yeah, but, you know, uh, but in, in 1980, you know, uh, you know, from like the 80s on, there were not, it, you had to be no. in this little box. And especially yeah. women not doing stand-up. Latina women, forget about it. So yeah. we really were groundbreakers. Yeah. And, so, yeah. and, and so you were always colorful, which was something that was never going to be allowed <laughs> <laughs> on television, you know, just yeah. to just like just to get a role, you were not going to be given the Julie Brown uh, opportunity that Julie Brown got. Right. Julie Brown was an uh, Anglo right. actress, comedian, who who very much was in that same genre of you yeah. that she was kooky and she wore these colorful clothes I remember and her. Yeah. and and she got a uh MTV, MTV. show yes. and yeah. did yeah. a couple of movies and yes. uh, yeah. it, it, she was in class with me so it was like they could do it and they could blow up we could do it and we would get penalized yes and so the fact of you being colorful it was like oh no she's got to take the stage she's got to take the stage so that was that was that but was there it. were a lot of contradictions because i remember i mean i i i do or i did i wrote this bilingual rap song it was a play on words chilaquiles and chipotle enchiladas and all that and but the rest of my material was in in english right with an accent, maybe some of it, you know, because then I started doing Ramona. From right, Corona. I was just going to say, yes. My man agent comes to see me and says, great, lose the wig. A manager comes to see me and says, um, you didn't tell me your, your set was in Spanish. I'm like, did you listen to the set that I did? Because last time I heard it was in English. It was in English. I yeah. know. So there was this resistance for us to be ethnic. You need to cross over. So in other words, but you needed to be wash. ethnic in a very... Very, particular way very very yes. little ethnic yes. Yes. you know it's like maybe throw in a little spanish word but when you start talking about chelo chato chui tron it's like oh my god what is she talking about oh my god we don't speak spanish <laughs> I love it. so but the contradiction was the laugh factory started doing latino nights and the line would be around the corner yeah. Latinos wanted to see real Latinos with spice and, you know, authenticity on the stage. And meanwhile, the industry didn't know what to do with us. Yeah, you they know? still don't know. 